Welcome to Screenwriters Rewatch from the Script Department. We're back again to delve into the IMDb's top 250 film list. In this episode, Millie and I are talking about the best day off a kid could ask for. Yes, that's right, another classic from the 80s, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And at the end of the podcast episode, we'll be deciding whether or not it deserves a place in film history and in the script department vaults snuggled in the glove box of the Ferrari 250 GT California. Welcome, Millie. This is your one of your first uh, recordings with us. Is that we've done one before with Marcus? Yeah. No. Thank you for having me. I knew exactly what I wanted to talk about. It's that film that everyone has seen. It will never get old. We just have to talk about it again. And I was watching it earlier, and I had a cup of tea in my hand. And it's such a comedy that it was one of those comedies where. I was actually sniggering out loud and I had to almost spat my tea back in my mug. It's that sort of brilliant and feel good film. Um, But yeah, no, it was like, it's such a brilliant film. I think one of the bits why, the reason why I like it is because it has that balance of while it's a comedy, it has that balance of uh, physical comedy. And then it's also witty written all in the dialogue as well. Um, But I think what I like as well is that the characters, there's so many, brilliant characters in there we've got like the main character Ferris who's that he's I was trying to put my finger on him earlier and he's like that rebellious teen but he's also like a a wise man in a way trapped in a a teen's body and because he has all these sort of wise life lessons on life um and things and he's he's also really clever but also at the same time he's like a a bit of a I'd say a bit of a big kid at heart as well. Um, but he's the one that that drives the narrative in bunking and pretending to be sick and having a day off school. And then also I think what's great is that he gets his best friend in on the act and makes him sort of enrolls him in part of his games and then he gets his girlfriend along. And then like you said, they steal this beautiful car and they go off on this fantastic day off in the city um, all together. And what I love is that it's so, I think it's such a a simple idea and it's something we can all relate to. Like who wouldn't want a day off school? Um, I think it's one of those things that um, like as a, as a kid, you probably would be writing all the, the tricks he tells you and all the tips on how to bunk off school to when you're an adult. It's one of those films that, where you can look back and think, oh, I, I could have done that. Oh, I used to do that. Um, I think for me, I probably remember trying to run off to the fair and bunking off in class once um but <laughs> I've said that out loud now so everyone knows but um yeah, yeah. mum and dad aren't listening are they <laughs> I know yeah literally but it's what it's one of those things that everyone wants to do and is really cool so I think as a character Ferris is seen as really cool and respected and that sort of he has that rebellious nature um but what really works with it is that um through this story um there are so many while he's having these this day off um on a nice sunny day there are these great forces of antagonism we've got i think i'd say the main antagonist which is um the dean the principal who um has said he's been off nine times um you know don't make it a tenth otherwise he's going to be held back a year um and then you've got so he's the main acting antagonist trying to catch him and throughout the story he's um sort of becomes that person that's trying to spy on him and catch him in the act which I think is brilliant um it sort of adds this real pressure to it but also as well as him we've got these other antagonists and forces of antagonism um so we've got um Ferris's sister who um, there's always a conflict there and there's this really poor relationship um where they don't get on in that sort of brother sister ri- rivalry and competition um, and then you've got sort of other characters along the way as Ferris goes through, like he, he bu- as he bunks off, he goes to a restaurant and um, there's a, a sort of quite a, a smarmy, stuck up a restaurant waiter that um, knows he's sort of, he's pretending to, I'd say that Ferris is pretending to sort of be someone he's not and he's kind of stealing someone's identity in order to um, get a place in the restaurant and be able to dine, dine there. Um, and the waiter just sort of is really sort of poking him and stuff. So I, I think it's it is really good in that way. There's so many scenarios and scenes and moments of conflict that really pull it together and make it really gripping. 
Um, but no, I really enjoyed it. I, I could watch it again and again. <laughs> it does have that appeal to it, doesn't it? And it does make you think, oh, you know, if I if I bumped off work today, what would I do with my time? It's it's a very fanciful film. I, I think if you really examined it hard, you would see that, that quite a lot of it is actually physically impossible in the constraints of time that they have. But the idea of it is lovely. And the that notion of breaking the fourth wall as well, that, that's, that's not something that you commonly see, I think, in films. Um, what's what's your take on, on that, breaking down that fourth wall? Yeah, I, I really like it. Um, I think it's very personable and adds a real genuine, authentic quality to his character. Um, and also it, it kind of, it's like, because he's talking to you, it's like you're in on this act as well and you're following him along. Um, and I think that's really good. I mean, it really hooks you in. Um, what I also love is that while this is a, a comedy story that's easygoing and entertaining, um, I really love the fact that I think that, that the film overall has some really interesting life lessons and messages. Like as soon as we... Um, as soon as the story sort of goes into itself and um, Ferris stands there, he's, he's looking at you and um, breaking down that fourth wall. And he says, um, life moves pretty fast. He says, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around every once in a while, you could miss it. And I think that's a really key thing to take even into this day. So it was said in the, the 1980s when they were making this film, it was part of that, but it's still something that, we do promote a lot still to this day and um, that keys quote um and i think that's really important as well and you can really learn a lot by watching this film you can you can learn how to bunk off school maybe in a way and then you can also <laughs> learn to stop and look around and take your environment in and yeah not not move too quickly yeah and uh, i think you mentioned it being a keys quote there's quite a few parts of this that I felt are really poke at the education system as to how it was being run and, and why it was what which one was more effective. Um, and yeah, that's a whole element that we'll get right into into when we get to discuss it in the podcast. So if you want to hear what we have to say about the rest of this, um, then head over for our podcast discussion wherever you get your podcast, just search for the script department. And the links are found in the description of this video. But we'll be back for another review soon. Thanks so much for watching our video, everybody. We really hope you enjoyed it. You can like us and subscribe to us over here on YouTube. And if you want to hear more of this conversation, head over to Spotify, Apple, places like that for a much longer version. But for now, YouTube thinks you'll... Uh... You'll like these ones. They look pretty good. I, re I reckon you should check it out. Especially that top one. Ooh, nice.